Namaskaram to my panelists and Namaskaram to the August gathering. At the age of five, the first verse that probably I was taught was Kujantam Ramarameti Madhuram Madhuraksharam Aruhya Kavita Shakham Vande Valmiki Kokilam. So, memorizing the verses of Sriman Narayaniyam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Ramayanam, and excerpts of Mahabharatam has been integral to my childhood. Of course, I did develop a distaste towards just memorizing it at that point in time. Later, while I was tutored in the Shastras, the meaning of the Shastra, that, that kind of uh, brought the enthusiasm in me to revisit the scriptures. So when I talk about revisiting in the today's context, understanding Ramayana and Mahabharata from abridged versions, from Wikipedia articles, from those three minute short talks in 10 respondent 9 o'clock prime TV uh, news channels is has become a rage. But uh, for me, Ramayana or Mahabharatam has been a journey where I read it with the interpretations, with the commentaries. Like for example, um, Madhava Yogin's work or Amrita Kataka, Tilaka, we have a plethora of commentaries that deal with the Ramayana and Mahabharata. So it's very, very important before we come on news channels or come on talk shows that we respect the commentaries and understand what is told in by the lines and between the lines. So that's been a part of my journey. Coming to revisiting our scriptures that happens every day. Because uh, as we do sadhana and read those words, there is a revelation at every point in time because it feels that, oh, I didn't know this before. So that comes through intense reading of the Shastras. I can give a variety of examples. But... I'll just keep my speech short here because I need to listen to my other panelists speak about their childhood experiences with the Itihasas and Puranas as well. But one thing that uh, I feel is the need of the R is coming to a consensus with a lot of the incidents. Just an example. Samudra Manthana the churning of the ocean comes in the Balakandam, the first canto of Srimad Ramayanam. It comes in the Adi Parva of Sri Mahabharatam. It comes in the eighth Skanda of Srimad Bhagavatam. It comes in the first Amsha of Vishnu Puranam. So the same incident told by Valmiki, Vyasa, Shuka and Parashara. So it is very, very important as students of Shastras that we learn the art of coming to a Samanjasam, which is called as consensus. And there are there is various formula to that. Itihasa Purana Bhyam Vedam Samupa Brahmayet Bibheti Alpashruta Atvedat Mamayam Pracharishyati. So we deploy the UV rule of integral calculus. So we have something called ILATE. Uh, integral, logarithmic, algebraic, trigonometric, exponential. So we have to deploy that particular rule to understand those Puranas. So my perspective in the current day context is to understand the Puranas and Itihasas in a very structured format rather than seeing two, three lines in news channels. This is where I'll stop. I would love to listen to the other people. Fair enough. Question in parts. First of all, our understanding that the language in our Itihasas and Puranas, which is Samskritam, and the language deployed in the Vedas is the same, itself is a bit flawed. I'll tell you how. I'm sure there'll be experts who will even be consultants to some of the best uh, Hindi authors here. Uh, I, I generally speak Hindi to a public, to an audience who doesn't speak Hindi. So that's my proficiency in Hindi. Yet I will try giving you an example. Kal me ayatha. So based on the verb 
यू डिसाइड द मीनिंग ऑफ कल विच इज येस्टे कल मैं आऊंगा अगेन इट बिकम्स टूमोरो बेस्ड ऑन दैट आऊंगा सो दैट कल गेट्स अ मीनिंग बेस्ड ऑन द वर्ब एंड द पार्टिसिपल इट टेक्स दिस इज हाउ मोस्ट लैंग्वेजेस आर एनी लैंग्वेज दैट वी नो इज बेस्ड ऑन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द्विजहा दैट विच इज बॉर्न ट्वाइस वेन कृष्णा इज बॉर्न टू सी द वाइटनेस ऑफ द टीथ द पोएट सेज द्विज चंद्र चंद्रिकाम ऐक्षत the two rows of teeth were seen why is the tooth referred to as dvijaha because it comes as a milk teeth and then as a permanent teeth so it is born twice so dvijaha in certain occasions we also refer to birds as dvijaha because they are oviparous they come as the egg and from the egg the chick so it's a two stage process this is how most languages are whereas when you come to vedam Ajaha, Durmanaha. If it goes Ajaha below, then it denotes goat. Ajaha, Yevamba. If it goes up, it is Brahma. So the the way you interpret Vedas is not on the context but on the sound. So technically, it is always better to say that Sanskritam as a language is inspired from the language of the Vedas and not the Vedic Sanskrit one. second thing um uh, you had asked with respect to repackaging uh, repackaging i am not one of those celebrated authors who seated on the stage i'm just a wanna be author i'm more of a speaker so i do travel i give about 300 discourses a year within india and outside india in my mother tongue which is tamil and as well as in english so i do find that there is a surge across generations to understand the scriptures better but trust me tushar this particular statement that uh, the generations feel that it should be repackaged is a line that has been repeated across centuries absolutely because I while i used to be in my class 9 my mother used to tell you are not studying the way you were studying in class 8 and she used to repeat the same dialogue while i was in class 10 so it either proves them exponentially deteriorating or she is lying whichever is the truth the point is at no point in time everybody will read the itihasas and will become the next valmikis and repackaging yes that is where i would like to conclude with this small point in mba of course i'm surrounded by again a lot of uh, such people such scholars here we do come across this course called as communication skills and we end up we may end up paying an average of about 12 to 22 lakhs to do our mba of course after paying loads for the coaching you attend a typical discourse of any person at least if you want if you have time you can attend my discourse free discourse it's open for all no, not you don't even have to register on day 6 when i talk about sugriva pattabhishekam from valmiki ramayana while rama and lakshmana go on a sojourn to search for sita they end up coming to a place called hampi the current day hampi which is bellari district from karnataka the state from which i hail from so rama and lakshmana they are very dejected they have lost sita they were only three of them and one member is missing so they are dejected and there is the other person who's the excommunicated brother who has been made a paraya by his own brother called sugriva so sugriva asks hanuman to go and check who these gym bodied men are so hanuman has to come and check who these men are hanuman comes and just speaks four sentences and after those four sentences rama turns towards lakshmana and says and gives about 10 verses this is called bhashana kaushalam the right way of speaking avistaram asandigdham adhritam avilambitam urastam kanthakam vakyam vartate madhyame svare samskara krama sampanna udhritam avilambitam uccharayati kalyani vacham hridaya harini while you speak in the public you should ensure that every person listens to you you are audible you shouldn't shout at a high pitch you shouldn't talk at a baritone 
you should not give gap between words avistaram you should not talk in such a way that the speed is so high that people are not able to understand what you are speaking because that is an art to not allow people to ask questions if you speak so fast people won't understand and ask questions isn't that a smart way so you should be talking words which are acceptable to the general audience whichever situation you are put to even in the tv debates you should never use words which are uncharitable that is the control that you should have sadhana gives you that control you should learn how to control your tongue no word see tv debates should not become 13 plus or 18 plus right all children there are children seated you should know how to frame your sentences not repeat so these are all important things now you tell me i am just expressing what is told in ramayanam and how better can i repackage it and if people are not even ready to listen to this so be it i'll now ask your question where should i begin that will be a better question because you had made it a very concrete question where should i begin reading so that's where i'll concur with her in sanatana dharma reading is given lesser preference listening is what is very important shravanam listening because we are a civilization of shruti and smriti we brought all those manuscripts much later so my humble suggestion or request to you is listen to hours together of lectures on ramayana while i used to get trained under my acharya bahudha shrotavya bahubhya shrotavya you should listen to ramayana many times rendered by many people the discourses the more you listen then you get trained and of course reading will come much later i don't i i want their books to sell really well yeah please okay? buy their books but please buy their